Mastercard has asked me, an ethical hacker, to help keep you in the know. So let's get started. Tip number one, educate and train your employees. Now, now why? Why start with your employees? Well, the reality is whether senior or junior, your employees are the first line of defense. And when they're equipped with the right information and when they're aware of the common threats that seek to do businesses harm, they act as a human firewall against cyber attacks. From malware that can freeze your system to ransomware demanding data for your money back. The threats are real, diverse and evolving. So it's important to cultivate a culture where every employee feels responsible for safeguarding the company. Tip number two, use strong, unique passwords. Imagine this, your accounts and devices are like digital vaults, storing everything from business strategies to financial data. And the key to that vault, a password. A simple password is like leaving the key under the doormat, but a strong, unique password, that's like having a high-tech security system. Length and complexity matter. Password 123 won't cut it anymore. Think password strong 2003. See the difference? And here's the cardinal rule, never reuse passwords. Each account deserves its own unique code. But you might be asking, how do I store all these complex passwords? How do I manage them? The answer, password managers. They not only generate passwords for you, but store them securely. Tip number three, implement multi-factor authentication or MFA. In the previous tip, we talked about passwords, but if we imagine a fortified castle, your password might get someone past the moat, but with MFA, there's that extra layer of defense stopping an attacker in their tracks. So what is MFA? Think of it like a double check or a second question. Is it really you trying to access this account? Your phone might buzz asking for confirmation. So how do you implement it? It's actually quite simple. Go under account settings on any service, usually under security, there'll be options to activate MFA. Do it, especially for those vital business accounts. Tip number four, update software regularly. It's something we overlook and I get it, they can be annoying, those never ending computer updates. But here's the thing, those updates aren't just about new fancy buttons or, or tweaked interfaces, they're digital armor providing patches for known vulnerabilities. Whether it's your phone, computer, or any application, outdated software is a cyber criminal's dream. But to stay safe, it's easy. Turn on automatic updates where possible, and for those big systems or crucial apps, set a monthly reminder to make sure you're on the latest version. A bit of inconvenience, sure, but the peace of mind is priceless. Tip number five, use antivirus software. Threats lurk at every corner. Trojans, malware, viruses, these aren't just buzzwords, but real threats to our system. Be it a simple email download can expose your organization to these threats. Antivirus software is essential. And here's the good news. With most computers, they come inbuilt with their own antivirus software. By simply ensuring it's active, you're already taking a huge step to safeguard your company. Tip number six. Limit access rights. In any organization, information is power. But when it comes to cybersecurity, it's important to limit who can access what. Think about it. Does the junior marketing intern really need access to sensitive financial data? Probably not. And that's where our principle comes in. The principle of least privilege, or PULP, is a cybersecurity best practice. It's about ensuring that employees have access to the systems and data that they need to do their job and nothing more. In more technical terms, Pulp reduces the risk of data breaches and insider threats. Tip number seven, backup data securely and regularly. Data, it's the backbone of any business. And in today's digital age, the importance of keeping that data not only secure, but backed up can't be stressed enough. Data loss can stem from many things, cyber attacks, hardware failures, or even simple human error. But the fallout, disrupted operations and potential financial hits. So how do we stay safe? Encrypt your backups, limit who has access to them, and make sure they're stored in an off-site location or protected cloud environment. Remember, backups aren't just a copy, it's your business's safety net. Tip number eight, exercise caution against phishing. One of the primary threats SMBs face are from phishing attempts. These are targeted efforts by cyber criminals using emails that look legitimate, but their goal, to extract your sensitive information. So to stay safe, stay skeptical. Always approach unsolicited emails with caution. If an email demands urgent action or offers something that seems too good, think twice. Verify the sender. Even small deviations from a genuine email address can be signs of a phishing attempt. And examine email links. Check any URLs. If it's not what you expected or looks suspicious, avoid it. By adopting these precautions, we can reduce the risk and help protect your data. Tip number nine, enhance email filtering. 
Email, it's our main line of business communication, but with the sheer volume we receive daily, spotting malicious emails can be like finding a needle in a haystack. Think of email filters like setting up checkpoints that inspect emails before they land in your inbox. Advanced email filters can detect and block emails containing attachments or links known to be harmful. And this goes beyond typical spam filters. On your chosen email provider, you can adjust the protection levels, giving you control over how aggressive or lenient the filter should be. So, it's worth diving into your email settings and checking that you're making the most out of these features. Tip number 10, develop a cybersecurity policy and incident response plan. In the journey to safeguard your digital assets, it's essential not only to defend, but to be prepared to respond. And that's where your plans come into play. A cybersecurity policy is your playbook. It sets the tone and direction. The document should outline protective measures, best practices, and guide every employee's actions. But what if, despite all measures, a cyber threat breaches your defenses? That's where your incident response plan jumps in. It's your blueprint on how to act swiftly, reduce damages, and get back on track. In the face of evolving threats, be two steps ahead. Arm your business with clarity and readiness. To learn more about cybersecurity, watch all 10 episodes.